Hey everybody, this is Frey, bringing you an audio commentary for WCReplays.com. This audio is copyright 2006 WCReplays.com, so please respect our intellectual property. Uh, go ahead and get this game paused at the two minute mark. Uh, observer point of view with the fog of war on, but uh, pick an observer because I'm actually going to be talking about uh, what both players do since they're both undead. And I'm always talking about the undead player, if you haven't figured that out by now. Um, good old Undead Mirror. Um, I, I've been getting a few requests to do an audio on this matchup. Um, and for the obvious reason that I haven't actually done an audio on this matchup yet. Um, a lot of people, uh, including myself, used to at least, uh, really don't like this matchup. Um, Undead vs. Undead is it's kind of weird. Um, it can get into a deadlocked situation very easily where you both are just kind of sitting there massing up stuff and the first person to actually try and do something interesting is just going to get killed for it. So um, it, it can be a slightly boring and slightly frustrating matchup. At the same time, uh, it can be a really good opportunity to practice your micro because... A lot of the time your opponent's building the same shit that you are, and when that's the case, the person with the better micro and army placement and stuff is the one that's going to win. Um, so it, you can find things to enjoy about this one if you try. I actually have grown to like playing Undead Mirror games, um, but one way or another, uh, if you're going to play in the ladder or in any kind of competition, you have to be able to deal with the matchup, so might as well listen and learn, right? Alright, um, I've talked long enough for an intro. Hopefully you people have this pause at the two minute mark by now. Uh, if you don't, hurry the hell up because I'm starting in three, two, one. Unpause. Uh, Suceria is going for a Lich School build, which is, um, I guess there, it is probably the most common, uh, strategy used in Undead Mirror. Um, Ghostop is going to be going for Fiends, which, uh, Death Knight and Fiends, which is perfectly legitimate. Um, there's actually, one of the things that I like about Undead Mirror is, um, there's really a lot of possibilities. Um, you know, don't, don't, don't neglect that fact when you're playing. Um, you know, you don't really have to be locked into one specific cookie cutter strategy. You never do, but, um, especially in Undead Mirror, you, you have a lot of options. Um, Crypt Lord Fiends actually works pretty good. You can start out with the uh, Dread Lord um, and Ghouls and try to counter your opponent's use of uh, Frost Nova, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, there's 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 a lot of ways of going about it. Uh, but anyway, these are actually probably two of the most standard ones facing off against each other, and I'm going to talk about how they interact with each other. Uh, both players start out creeping. Um, Suceria is trying to creep with as few ghouls as possible so he can stash up uh, lumber for fast tech. Um, I, I'm not really sure I like his creeping pattern. Honestly, I think if you watch what Ghost Stop is doing in the upper left-hand corner on this particular map, you just creep out the uh, three level one camp and then you move right on to the uh, wizard and two rogues. Uh, the deal is, is that the high level mob in that group, the uh, the wizard has very few hit points, so you can, what you want to do is run in there and just immediately focus everything on that wizard. Um, you can get sometimes a decent item out of that, and you also will get level 2 from those two creep camps. Um, if you look at Suceria, um, he's actually taking out the three uh, little green camps on the south part of the map. And as a result, it takes them a little bit longer to reach level 2. So if, uh, if you can afford the ghouls, which I think Suceria probably could have, uh, it's right around the corner from his base, I, I think it's a lot better to creep out the goblin shop on this map before you go on to anything else. Um, creeping is um, really going to be more important to the fiend user. Um, watch Go Stop. He's got... Um, he's got Lightning shield on one of his fiends, so he immediately moves it by the enforcers. Uh, that is letting it tank damage, which is not something you normally want to do with your fiends, but uh, it is a good use of the situation where the, your uh, enemy units are casting lightning shield on your units. And look what is about to happen to 
uh, Ghost Stop in his base. This is pretty much the standard uh, Lich harassment. He actually brought a couple of ghouls along with him. You at the very least want to have some skeletons when you go in. Don't go in with your Lich Bear because he's just going to get hit by the Nerubian Tower. And it'll take him too long to actually uh, get to the Acolytes and deal damage to them. He actually he managed to take out four acolytes like just right in the middle of uh, Ghost Stop's tech. So uh, for those of you that are going to be using the Lich and Ghoul strategy, um, that little timing is really critical. It's going to be like right about when when your upgrade to the uh, to the tier two is um, like right about halfway complete. That's when you want to push into a fiend user's base because uh, what you'll do is any acolytes you'll kill he'll have like he'll be maybe like a third of the way through his tech because the uh, fiend user is going to start their tech slower um, and any acolytes you can kill it's going to be a very very long time before they can rebuild so that push uh, was really uh, has given Suceria a huge advantage which in my opinion he is now kind of blundering away by sitting around in his base um, he, I, I think he really takes way too long to get back out creeping here, um, and this is going to allow, uh, this is one of the things that's going to allow Ghost Stop to not completely lose, because, um, a after killing four Acolytes like that, uh, right in the middle of his tech, um, Suceria really, uh, should be able to win this. We will see, however, if, uh, that actually happens, because like I said, he was a little bit slow on the draw, uh, getting back out to creep again, whereas uh, Ghost Stop immediately, just, you know, with with utmost efficiency, uh, you know, I don't know, no, he didn't even have to grab another rod, he'd already gotten a second one, but um, he went right back out and started creeping again. As a result, his Death Knight is almost level 4, uh, and just got it, in fact. Once again, uh, if you are going for Fiends in an Undead Mirror matchup, um, you want to be creeping all the time. Anytime your opponent is not um, like actively attacking your base, you you want to be out creeping as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, we see Suceria has added a Death Knight. Uh, that's pretty important because the Lich doesn't have a lot of hit points, and a fiend-based army is going to have a lot of focus damage. So you don't want them being able to force you to run away by just um, beating up on your Lich. Uh, now, what Suceria is doing here isn't so great. He gets into some trouble, partly because Ghost Stop has very good micro, but uh, also because he goes in to harass the fiends and he doesn't bring any ghouls or skeletons with him. The deal is, uh, you want to when you when you want to start you want to start killing off your enemy's fiends with the lich, um, because if you if you let him build them up, uh, he's going to get like a really strong army. You're not going to be able to deal with it. I'll talk about that later. Um, but whenever you go in with the Lich to try and kill off fiends, A, you want to have your Frost Nova at level 2, which he has, and B, you want to bring like a few ghouls or skeletons with you. Because um, thanks to armor types, the uh, ghouls and skeletons are going to be doing double damage to the fiend. Plus, whenever you hit it with Nova, it's going to be slowed down, so um, they will be able to get extra hits in that they wouldn't if the fiend were running away at its normal speed. Uh, so... Lesson learned there, um, whenever you go and try and pick off your opponent's fiends, you really want to bring along a little, at least a little bit of me melee damage with you. And uh, in an example of why people kind of don't like Undead Mirror, um, from that point, the creeping continues. And that's really about the best um, option for both players. Um, Although, I would say, now that Suceria has Ghoul Frenzy, uh, this is a point where he should be pushing the, pushing the attack. Um, other than that one really excellent push uh, into Ghost Stop's base, um, so far in this game, I think uh, Suceria has really been playing a little bit too passively. Um, anytime you are the player with the Ghouls, and you're in like a Ghouls versus Fiends battle, uh, it is upon you to be on the fence on the offensive as much as you possibly can um, the fiend player is going to be able to creep faster than you for one thing but also um, the the late game army once once uh once you both break 50 supply and and start adding things in the the fiend army is really going to win 
Um, you really want to be starting as many fights as you can uh, before your opponent gets up to 50 supply because that's when you're really going to have the chance to swarm him with ghouls and pick off fiends. Uh, Suceria instead is kind of sitting at back and creeping, um, which he really just doesn't have anything to gain from this. Um, he's not going to get any really any more levels on his heroes from this. I think he's trying to get his Death Knight to level 3, which... Uh, it just doesn't really do him a whole hell of a lot of good. I mean, it, it is helpful. Level 3 is an important level for a Death Knight, but it's not nearly as important as uh, if you were, say, trying to heal fiends with that Death Knight. Admittedly, uh, creeping does become extra important on a small map like Teneristan because by, um, you know, the by the time both players uh, break 50 supply and, and, you know, it's pushing into the late game, uh, chances are all the creeps are going to be cleared off the map. So if you can take out more of those uh, before your opponent has the chance to get to them, you're going to have a hero level advantage that will help you out a lot. Um, now that the most of the creeps have been cleared, um, Suceria is actually going to sit very passive, or excuse me, Ghost Stop, the uh, Fiend user, is going to sit passively in his base for a little while here. Um, sitting passively like this and playing defensive is normally a bad thing, but remember what I said, uh, time is basically on the Fiend user's side. Um, once you have an, a good backbone army of about six or seven Fiends, that gives you the ability to start popping out destroyers, because when you have six or seven Fiends, your opponent isn't going to have enough Gargs to make, uh, make the destroyers useless. Uh, most of the Gargs are going to end up getting webbed. And destroyers uh, absolutely cream ghouls. So um, once once a few destroyers get popped out, and and uh, if they are not immediately taken care of by by enemy gargoyles, they are really going to lay waste to any ghouls any ghouls in the opponent's army, which is very important advantage because ghouls, uh, other than that, are 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 quite strong in undead mirror. Um, Especially, you know, fiends have a hard time with them. Um, another thing that uh, Ghost Stop's going to do to help them deal.